added it to the timeline. I'm like just that. telling you that it, yeah, yeah that it's it, gorgeous. It was a new layout. Did you right. see my picture over the weekend? We are live on the ball talk. Yes. I'm waiting I, to actually press the record button over here I, until Jeremiah don't, says. You so. don't need to press it until uh, until we've shared it all adequately. Wait, are we sharing it now? Yeah, you I thought it. we weren't. I thought we weren't no, pressing it yet. No, you share that. No, now we're you're not pressing not. another one. You're so slow to the uptake. Oh, hold on, man. What app am I supposed to use? Uh, the Twitter. Oh, wait, wait. It just it came down. You can do the Insta. You can do the Insta. Oh, and look oh. who's the rookie who doesn't have it muted. Uh, some kind of reporter. He's a print. They don't normally the newspaper just doesn't start talking randomly at him. He's not used to these <laughs> this newfangled technology. <laughs> Look at all of us not where, looking at each where other. Where is your printing press? Is it? Uh, do you have? Do you have some Stone Age person in where the basement do you get of the courier? Your papers printed. Just out of curiosity, before we start recording, are we not recorded? Not yet. We're live. We're live, but We're live the we haven't reco- started recording the audio. How do I yeah. mute it? How do I mute it? You just you turn the sound down. Grandpa, oh, hold on, really quick. It's not a mute. <laughs> it's turning the sound off. Well, you Those turn are two it, different things. When you turn it all the way down, it does say mute. Okay. I'll this is going to be downright abusive to Travis. You're welcome. Yeah. Here we go. In Travis, five, hold on, hold four, on. Where do you get your papers printed? Three. At the printing press. Two. One. Welcome to the Boss Hard Be Podcast. This is episode number 190 of East Central Indiana's favorite podcast. I'm Jeremiah Morrill. Today, joined by co host Dakota Davis, Cade Coger. <laughs> And producer reporter Chris Guffey. Today's episode features Travis Wyke, like Budweiser, who is the editor in chief of the Courier Times newspaper uh, located in Newcastle, Indiana. Um, one of the premier news outlets, uh, second only to the Boss Hog of Liberty podcast. Wyke, like Budweiser, is empowered by wind energy. Mm-hmm. My God. So we will be talking to Travis about uh, some pop culture with television, uh, namely whether or not you have cut the cord on your cable yet, or if you are just streaming, or how people are consuming their media now and what the future is for television. Uh, We'll also be talking to Travis about property taxes, uh, where it goes locally, why we pay them, what the history behind property taxes are, and the distribution of that money in your local area. And we will also be getting a city update from reporter slash producer Chris Guffey and also candidate for City Council Ward 3 in Newcastle. And he's going to be updating us about the Newcastle City Council uh, elections. Yes, yes, I will be. um, It seems I do all the work around here. It seems so. I do all the legwork. Stay tuned until the end. Uh, All right, so this show is about our lives in rural Indiana. We're here to push your boundaries and make you think as individuals. Sometimes we will provoke you. Other times we'll make you laugh. Hopefully you always learn something new. Today, more than anything else, we're just here to tick off Travis. So uh, we can all all (laughs) unite around that and uh, realize that he's fake news. And uh, back back in the old days, they used to be a a seven-day-a-week paper. And now, uh, now I guess you read about tomorrow's news in a week. No, uh, we started as a... I think the the original Courier was a, like a once a month magazine back in the 1800s, and then it became a, a biweekly, and then a weekly, and then it changed with there with the population of uh, well, Newcastle yeah. and Henry County expanding and contracting. You know, we adjusted to the market. Someday, maybe we can uh, we can all quit our jobs and be full time staff and just really bring you down. But for now, we'll just continue being a little bit above you. <laughs> <laughs> I did write. I did write a strongly worded letter to the editor today, uh, and I I did reference the uh, the, the com- competition in the marketplace. Was that a letter to the editor? I mean, it was a it was a uh, was it, it, it was a complaint section. about you was, not getting I, I as sent, a subscriber. I sent it. I, I sent official complaint as the subject line. Right, not a letter to the editor, which and would I, say letter to the editor to, or dear editor. And I sent it to. Editor at the Courier Times. Yeah, a lot don't, of people send things I don't to say, editor. I don't even say dear editor. Like whenever I'm putting out, um, dear sir. Whenever I'm writing uh, opinion pieces for the Courier, I just put editor, comma. I, well, yeah, that that no doesn't dear. say <laughs> official no complaint. Dear. No, I, I recognize that. that. I recognize that we don't have that. You know that that I just uh, familiarity. Know, well, but I just, when you start with official complaint, <laughs> that is very clearly not a letter to the editor. That well, is a complaint. I mean, as it's as not going minimum, in the paper, is what you're saying. At a minimum, it would like if he had said this is a letter to the editor. I, I you would have like, published it. I read, a, read the thumbs. <laughs> there's a thumbs down right in the top of our thumbs column. I feel like this may be a thumbs down. This would have been in in this week's episode, and it would have. 
been, but that's not what you sent it as. You sent it as a formal <laughs> complaint. The guy that submitted his thumbs down. Let uh, it be on known last week. in the record. Well, and no, last week this guy sent, he said thumbs down to the Courier Times for this and that. And I called him to verify. I was like, well, is this a complaint or do you want this as a thumbs down? And he goes, I want it as a th- want thumbs it. down. And I was like, all right. And I typed it up and said, bye, click, because you don't want to have a conversation about this. You have a, a, a a thumbs down. Okay. Wow. It's your opinion. I'm not going to argue with you. I would never opinion. publish a, a bad review of us. Well, that's because you're fake I would news. never. I would never take a bad review that we get on our Facebook page and then share it to my own personal Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's... that's if you I, get, think, I think if, that's like reputation management, which is cool in your brand, and I understand that. But you're also... The, the you're joke also was that I have done that in the past. <laughs> on purpose? Within yeah. the last oh. week. Oh, yeah. well, there you go. <laughs> High five. We were five stars until last week. Now we're 4.9. Oh. It's yeah. like an Uber. Four point five stars, guys. Five stars. Five stars. Five stars. <laughs> please, please rate and review. Uh, it, it is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, I was in Rural King on Saturday, and uh, Corey Owens saw me. But uh, once again, it was another one of those. I don't know who this person is because I only know them on the internet. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so he started talking to me, and I, you know, I just did the best I could. But uh, yeah, I totally didn't figure it out until the next day that that's who it was. Corey's a good guy. Always posting pictures of stuff that he's uh, of dinners he's making. Yeah, he makes me very hungry. Oh yeah. A lot of grilling. All right, so in the Patreon portion of the show, we Corey, talked to... Uh, this is your chance to join the Patreon, pa- Boss Hogger Liberty, uh, patreon.com slash Boss Hogger Liberty. And if you do join, then we talked to Travis in the Patreon o- members only portion of the show about uh, Robert uh, Mueller getting just absolutely bombarded by MSNBC and their reporters over there, asking him a series of questions as he was trying to walk out of church from his Easter Sunday service, trying to get to his car, just had, went to Easter service with his family, and he starts getting bombarded with questions about whether or not he would testify in front of Congress and if he was showing a special favorability to President Trump. So we talked to Travis all about all, everything that had to deal with that. Travis Which, said we, that Trump tried needs, to talk about when, it. Yeah. When you join that, it's 20 minutes, and we talked about Robert Mueller for three minutes because yeah. we yeah. had Travis on, and we know how well, this is going to Well, here's go. how it went. Travis, review the tape. Travis, Can we review the tape? Travis, yeah. you said that uh, you said Trump should start jailing these reporters. <laughs> So people, you're trying to I get said, people that's to pay the end of that and, conversation. You're trying to get up. people to be to pay for patrons to go back and see that Travis did not actually say anything <laughs> like that. I guess the only way you can do it is to go to patreon.com/slash Boss Hog Liberty find out. to find out if he's uh, if Travis is truly for uh, locking him up. We do want to thank her some. Up. Of, that's what he said. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we do want to thank some of our Patreon members. If you are fifty dollars or more a month, then you get a special shout out on the show. So thank you to. Christopher Bilbrey of Perception is Reality in Winchester, Brantley Spicer, Christy Avery, Jonathan Phillips of uh, the, uh, the, the great Moore. Buick dealership in Fishers. If you go there, tell them that I sent you. And then Craig DeCosta, who whoa, whoa, listens whoa, whoa, all the whoa, way from whoa, Hawaii. Whoa, if you go to Andy Moore Buick GMC, tell him Jeremiah Morrill sent you. <laughs> Listen, folks, I told him that Jeremiah sent me, so Jeremiah's already got his piece of the piece of the pie. Do you guys get a kickback on that? Is that what I'm hearing? Oh, yeah, of you get a referral. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. And then uh, we do want to thank our new members, Gregory Counts and Andrew Bowman. Great people. Great folks over there. Yes. We love you people. <laughs> if you don't feel like joining the Patreon, but you still want to support the show, then you can get on our Amazon wish list, which is where we put our equipment upgrades that we are hoping to get one day. And you can also go to our T-Chip stores, which is tchip.com slash bhol1, bhol2, and bhol3. And then we also have a GoFundMe page set up so that we can buy new camera equipment to make this show way better. Very exciting. Uh, of course, we are streamable. If you listen to the podcast, you can uh, you can find us on YouTube, and you can jump on uh, Facebook and watch us live. Um, that's that's the thing we want to talk about today. The fir- The opening salvo here is going to be digital media and how we've, how we've changed over the last decade. Um, how, do, how do we watch stuff? You know, Game of Thrones, everybody, everybody was talking about Game of Thrones this week. Oh, yes. And it's, Even uh, the people that don't watch Game of Thrones. It, I've, I've it, never it, seen a full episode of Game of Thrones, <laughs> but uh, my roommates were watching it, and I caught the last 20 minutes, and I understand. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, a, intense. it's a big thing for yeah. some folks. It, uh, I didn't see any tents. I saw Castle. It also got, there were 54 million pirated versions available the day of the first episode of season eight. Wow. 54 million downloads of the pirated versions. Yeah, it's the most 
pirated TV show ever. Is piracy a crime? According to the FBI, yes, it is. Well, is there a victim? Well, well, wow, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like people, it's somebody's job to make that. Yeah, you know, You're like a, the a, carpenters a, and the makeup people and the the old ladies who like sewed the. Really? Why are they only? Ladies? You think they're they old are ladies? great costumes? They, <laughs> whoever makes the costumes. <laughs> well, the, the men and women. Then, so so yeah, you know, you know, uh, uh, gender the gender neutrality. The, they the the the, 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 Z's, the Z and Zers <laughs> who who. But I mean, you know, those folks got to got to get paid. It's like when somebody copy pastes my uh, news stories and just shares them everywhere without giving credit to it. You know, yes. It's already out there, and it's digital, and you can just... It's ones hey guys, and zeros, but I, I just got a really good job. idea of how we can get more traffic to our site. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna... pirated versions of the Courier Times. <laughs> <laughs> My image and Dakota's image was pirated over the weekend. It was, yeah. The councilman Aaron Dickin took my profile picture and then uh, pasted Cade's face over top of my face. He did a face swap. And it was weird. Yeah, now, hold on. Under what context? <laughs> I felt though? so uncomfortable. Hold on. Uh, what was the it. context of him using that? Was so Dakota took a new? I guess you took a selfie, or did you have a friend take your picture? It was for you a over selfie. The you took a selfie of you behind the microphone. Yeah, whenever Chris and I were recording his candidate video. Right, but behind but if scenes. he was using it for entertainment purposes, <coughs> like I it mean, was that's for not piracy. Promotion. It was hilarious. so. No, he you, was you, promoting. You, you're stop. Don't get the story wrong, fake news. That's we'll what get I'm there. asking. I'm wait, collecting wait information. No, don't jump to conclusions. I'm going to get you a mat. This is jump to conclusions. This is the car door. pulling uh, the horse right now. So, <laughs> so if you if you noticed over the weekend, if you if we were really friends and you looked at his Facebook page, never happened. Uh, Dakota had put this new picture up, mm-hmm. and the next thing you know, Cade's like, "Man, I need to get a new headshot from the studio." And Councilman Dickens says, "Oh, I got you covered, man." <laughs> so he face swaps him. And Worst it's... Aaron Dickens impersonation ever. So I know I'm not shooting pool or anything cool like that in the basement. Uh, it was on, on it was taxes. it was really weird that picture. Yeah. Every time I laughed, I, every time I saw it, I did like a nervous laugh. It, I gave it like, a, I gave it 24 hours and I couldn't look at it anymore. <laughs> I, I had to change it. It, it was very confusing it? for me because <laughs> Cade and Dakota had basically be the Facebook. exact same picture. So if you, we have a lot like of group chats. Profile pictures. The world runs on group chats around here. So oh, okay. and it puts the picture, the tiny, tiny version of your profile picture <laughs> yeah. in there, and all of a sudden it's Dakota and then Bizarro Dakota, similar yeah, Dakota, right there. I don't, <laughs> I don't think we're friends. You know, uh, you know, Doodle Bob from SpongeBob. The yes, yes. yeah, I'm I'm very when familiar. When he draws yeah. with Doodle the fake, yeah. with the pencil, that's what it was like. Okay, we're yeah. friends. Me, Hoy, Manoy. That that's what that guy <laughs> was. <saying. laughs> no, it's that one. It's the it's the Cade. That's what am I looking? Picture. I changed no, it. Back. Go to it that. Made book. me so uncomfortable. I look like the guy oh that God. buys like too teaching, much Sudafed. It's like teaching Grandpa how to use a computer. You got to click on it, and then you got to look at the previous photo he had. That's wow. Did you find it? All right, we'll have to Striking. share that from the Boss Hog of Liberty page. Strike. Wow. Let's get to what the we topic. Do, we'll do it this way. I will, we'll create a poll today. And we'll let that. it last a week. Which one? Do, which one's your favorite? Vote for uh, Dakota or or Faux Dakota. Aaron Dickin <laughs> yeah. is amazing. Yeah, if he did this, he's great. He did a great job. He, he should work for Game of Thrones. So he, he, he should. He should work, work for Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, and then he won't get paid because you guys are pirating the video. <laughs> well, I he do pirates not, us. I, we're going to pirate him. So, so speaking of Game of Thrones. There are, there are 94 million U.S. households that still have uh, cable or satellite or some other type of television provider at their house. Um, contrasted with 147.5 million Americans that watch Netflix more than once a month. Right. That's, a, that's a big difference. And it, and it keeps dropping. Uh, 2018, uh, I think they saw it was almost double digit drops in service in customer service as far as percentage points goes across the board for television providers, people dropping their their television. Uh, so it's it keeps dropping. Last year, they said that it was only going to be like three and a half percent, but it almost got to 10 percent. So it's definitely dropping higher than what anybody ever expected. So my question and I guess Jeremiah's question whenever he thought of this was who like how how do you how does everybody in here consume their media, their favorite television show? Do you All stream at once. is it do you stream it over the internet? Do you have a television provider? What's the scoop? You go through Metronet, Comcast, what I, I cut I, I have the internet. 
Uh, are we starting with me? Yeah, we'll yes. start with Travis. Oh, okay. I have the internet. Uh, you jumped up quick, so I, and, apparently uh, you're very and, proud of this. Uh, a lot of a lot of Facebook watch. Facebook watch, eh? Which is what we're on right now. Yeah, yeah. we're on Facebook watch. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of those, and I that's more like that's not you, necessarily. I I didn't consent to that. It just happens, and then I find that I've fallen down a rabbit hole. Yeah, I do um, the same. That's like what we puts do, me to sleep at night my, is watching craft videos on Facebook. My watch. my big thing. So uh, at my house, um, thank you, Steve and Brittany, for providing this service. YouTube, yeah, whoever that is, not YouTube, not YouTube. What's the one? YouTube, uh, Netflix. Sorry, Netflix and um, CBS All Access. CBS All Access. Yeah, that's how we watch Star Trek Discovery. So we and do I'm pretty still sure have, that's the only thing that we you watch. You can still that. get a uh, free television through antenna you yes. can get an antenna service and around here you can uh you can get I, the major networks. i think at our work office we just have an antenna and we we get like 15 channels so the question i have for so we'll you get start broadcast with, we'll start with yeah. travis broadcast yeah. do you watch it all on your tablet or your phone or your computer or do you cast or stream on the television still uh we watch so we do uh youtube on the switch on the nintendo switch because that's a mobile device which I guess would count as the tablet phone right. sort of thing, um, but um, I I do the uh, the TV because I don't have uh, the password for the Netflix to watch it on my computer, and I don't yeah. ask for the password. It's it's you guys. So, um, <laughs> but uh, so how do you do it on the TV? Is it just a? It's uh, it's it through the it's through the uh, smart Blu-ray, I think. Are we getting this yeah, down so, yeah, into the weeds? Yeah, yeah that's, that's, this is the conversation I wanted to have because I think it's changed. We've had, we've had this evolution, and, and, it, and it happened in my house about two years ago where we went from, you know, you had DirecTV. Everybody had DirecTV or you had Dish Network or you had Comcast. You know, some very old school, the last 20 years, things didn't change. You had the same um, over, the, you know, over the top programming package. Uh, and you had a, some somebody set a dish out in your yard, or you had cable, and now we've gone to everybody's streams or has digital access. So at our house, we've got Chromecast everywhere, in every TV, if I can have it on my phone, it'll cast up, and I can cast YouTube TV, which is my cable replacement. I can cast Hulu and I can, uh, for old shows, uh, or regular YouTube or Facebook Live, and they go onto the TV, and it's just like watching, you know, the regular, you know, the old set top box, but it's it's a different method. Um, and I think we've finally gotten to the point. I don't know if there's anybody in this room that's going to say that they have a, you know, they pay a Comcast bill that's for video. Nope. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I don't so even I, I bought my first house whenever I was 18, left my parents behind in the dust. And how are they now? I don't they're, know. I haven't talked happy. to them in years. <laughs> <laughs> No, I happy. Is that what you said? Yeah, really happy. <laughs> <laughs> they have so much more money. And I've n- I've never had uh television I, except for at one point whenever my internet w- bill went up and I called Metronet and said I'm not cool with my internet bill going up and they said we can take it back to the same price for the same internet speed but we are going to have to give you a TV package as well. But I never like got any type of a box or anything. I just I had the TV package. It just never got used. And then whenever it went up again, <laughs> my Your mom's, mom's in the, the chat. chat. <laughs> hey, Dakota. Uh, come, How are you, come Dakota's home, mom? Come home for Christmas. Uh, nice beard. Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, how's yeah, that but, girl you were seeing, Audrey? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's still dating. <laughs> do I have any? Do I have any grandchildren? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh geez no but My, we went we have graduated and and we've gone to we have hulu live with no commercials. oh i forgot about hulu because that's how we watch orville yep. you're right yeah hulu. and hulu orville um hulu and youtube i I barely even watch netflix anymore except for if they have an original show umbrella that I academy see. Uh, I haven't heard of that one. There's too many. You there's just heard way, of it. We are yes, in the no. golden age of television, folks. There's so many good things on TV right now. Well, it's, it's well, like was the, the tin age of this television. Is, I'm going to call it the golden age. This is I'm what saying the golden age has happened aluminium. is we don't have, other than maybe Game of Thrones, which takes people by storm, we don't have the one show you have to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? It, we don't have a common uniting anything. We narrow cast <clears throat> where we have a podcast in East Central Indiana that we talk about and people won't look for our show once a week. I, I listen to very 
niche podcasts that are just for me, whether it's a financial show or a racing show. Um, and those, that's what we, you know, that's what we care about. I'm sure Travis, you have a, a rotation of things you listen to that don't interest a whole lot of people and they may only have 500 or a thousand listeners or viewers. So we don't have these big uniting things any longer. Except for local handful. newspaper, you're right. Well, yeah, sure, the local, the the Courier Times, the Brisket well, Gazette. No, no, for real, for real. Um, you're right. We do have because of the change in technology and the fact that so many people, you know, you have these uh, DJ rappers who can make SoundCloud know, rappers, right? But they can SoundCloud, hit a yeah. very specific niche. You have niche podcasts or authors. My kid reads the uh, WhatsApp. I think it's a WhatsApp yeah. or whatever, yeah, WhatsApp. and it's all it's it's published work, you know. It's it's yeah. little it's, it's little real ebooks, it's yeah. real writing. But but that's so niche that you are never going to read that. You're never going to listen that. You're never going to watch that. If you mm-hmm. when I come back to not point at people because we are a podcast first, Mister Wyke. I know explaining <laughs> new technologies is difficult I pointed to, to the, Chris Guffey to the three different times. <laughs> um, <laughs> but to the, uh, to the printed word guy. Yeah, but well, what I'm saying is, then I come back to this as y- the one place where different content is available in one media that that different that appeals to different people is your local newspaper because you have your sports that the people out in Shenandoah care about their sports team they right they want then. to know about their wrestling right they want to know right. about their football team right and or you've got the um uh we did CSI at try high you know and so the people from South Henry want to buy the paper or we do you know uh the features about um what was the one we just did was about the You've uh, done a woman, month on the, on a, a twenty year anniversary a 20 for a playground. Year, uh, the playground, yeah, we have the on Sunday's feature was uh, the woman who is a missionary in Thailand, and and so all of those different people can go to the same source yep. and get different stories. So so that's I mean that's one of the reasons that we don't change to the format of your online magazine that's trying to get you in with your clickbait because it would only be to that niche. Instead of the people who buy the newspaper just to see the obits or just to see the arrests or just to read the classified ads or read the comics. Did, did, you, everybody did you get some hate get mail everybody. over the obituary policy? What's that? Did you get some hate mail over obituary policy here recently? Uh, for people who didn't understand um, <laughs> that it costs money to bury people. It's like They're going to be really upset when they go to a funeral home and see what that bill looks like. And <laughs> the fact that we actually put it out there, you're welcome. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what our policy is and what we charge. So that the, wasn't a change in policy either. No, that was no just nothing like, had changed. I just let you're just people like, hey, know. Letting you know, this is in. how it's been. Yeah. yeah. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How dare you do the thing that you've been doing as a business <laughs> for 175 years? Well, that's like we're when, still super low. That's like when prices. Councilman Dickon tried to ban smoking a second time. Like, what the hell are you doing, Dickon? Hey, we, 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 we were gonna we were gonna stay pass a law. I was, I was gonna, gonna. We were gonna smoke on the sidewalk. Outside I was gonna of the buy city council a meeting pipe. For two hours. <laughs> I was gonna buy a pipe and sit out there Corn and cob just. Pipe? No, I was gonna Corn probably get a better one. <laughs> okay. I, right. I, I would be afraid that the corn. If we're out there for two hours, I would be afraid that the corn it, cob would just burn. It does. That's part of a corn you cob can pipe. Buy, you can buy a glass Sounds bowl down, down the street. <laughs> you can and get those won't you burn. can get tobacco <laughs> smoking <laughs> implements at any gas station in New Canaan. Oh, not, you're right. Not any, those are just but for the tobacco. gas stations that have GSTV. <laughs> <laughs> GSTV. All right. So, so back to TV. Speaking of television, you're, you're uh, welcome. Fifty-six you percent career in this of Americans of that of those ninety-four million Americans that say they have TV. 56% of them say that it's just because it's bundled. So they are, are in the is, same boat that I was in. Yeah. 70% of the people that are paying for TV say that it's not worth it and too expensive. 70%. So the thing that the network or the service providers thought that they could hang on to was the fact that we still had sports and we still had things like HBO, Showtime, whatever. We still had all these specialty channels that people can only get through our service. Wrong. Yeah, correct. That Every one of them has come out with a, a new streaming service. You can get ESPN, Showtime with Hulu now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. ESPN is like, I think it's like, what, four ninety four a month? I think you would probably know. Yeah. But really? Yeah. Uh, ESPN, ESPN five bucks plus. a month and you can get, ES, you get every sports possible network? The UFC is on ESPN now, too. 
Oh, yeah. that's why so I have it. There's a right. lot of a la carte pricing options, and you pick what you want. Yeah. Uh, you, you can literally customize your what you want and to cater to you now. By yeah. a la carte, I, I burped in the microphone. I apologize. <laughs> but uh, a la carte can actually get you up past that $100 a month thing, which I think is fantastic. I just think that's... You pick what you want. No, I know, and then you pay more. But, that, for it, but I, I just had this discussion with yeah. The... But that is the median. Okay, so you ha- that is the direct middle. So there are millions of people out there paying. That's not way what median more. means. But okay, the median, median median is the is the arithmetic. The mean. That is the mean. The oh, mean is no, the average. No, you are you the are median way right. Is in the middle. Yeah. You are way yeah. correct, yeah, and I am the not. You're mentioning uh, the mean. It's you're okay. on the wrong. You're on the boss of liberty. This isn't fake news. We will read your retraction in two or three days. It's fine. All right, so. The the one hiccup to this though, with everybody moving to streaming, is companies like Comcast. They they want their they still want their hook, their pound of flesh. Yep. If we go all Shakespearean, they want their pound of flesh. I did that for you, and you didn't get excited. I don't know. I don't know how to help you, Travis. No, it's it's from the um, barber of Venice, I believe. No, the Merchant. Merchant of Venice. There we go. So they want their pound of flesh. They still want their close. piece. And uh, they they have data caps. So luckily, our one of our providers here in town doesn't Metronet. The uh, mm-hmm. lovely people at Metronet who uh, are, provide the hosting for uh, for the Boss Auto Delivery podcast. Uh, but if you use Comcast, they say you only get a certain amount of data, and then we're going to start charging you an overage. Yep. So for some houses that want to make this switch, you do have to consider that as well, because you can only stream so much glorious high definition before you have a problem. Well, I don't even have internet at my house, so how do you manage? Um, I use my smartphone. Uh, you have unlimited data on the that's correct on the phone. Yeah, I think that still counts. That's not technically internet. I stream, but I don't have internet. No, that is it's internet. That's internet. Nope, not to me. Look here, Dan Quell. Is it Dan Quell? Who is it? Fake news. No, who Fake invented news. the internet? Who who was the guy that invented the internet? Uh, Al Gore. Yeah, Al Gore. Look here, Al Gore. <laughs> that's the internet. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna fight Man Bear Pink, and I'm gonna kill him. Whoosh. Um, I have an interesting stat of the seventy of the thirty percent of people that get their television from a service provider. Sixty percent of those are baby boomers or older. And if you're saying to yourself, "These are all interesting stats," but Dakota, where are you, where are your sources? Well, you can find my sources in the uh, show notes, which is available to Patreon members at five dollars <laughs> or more a month, nice. and they get posted in the pa- in the Facebook group every week. So that's how you can access those. But I thought it was interesting that the older generation is the slowest to catch on to this potentially. And I'm sure for a lot of them that that want all of the different packages that you can get uh, a potentially money saving opportunity for them. Why do you think that is? It's just is it just slow to adapt change or is it um is it because can they're be, intimidated? No, well, there's a lot yeah. that you got to do with technology. Um right. cuz you're like the idea of running an app through a Blu-ray player to me is the same as running an app through a phone or whatever. I've had to learn that. Keep in mind that my children have never lived in a house with a phone stuck to the wall. Hmm. You know, my 4-year-old knew what texting was before she knew how to write. And that's okay. She's fourteen Dakota now. Dakota has she never four- had television in the, in his house. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I will. Ne- I've never been the guy that was in the phone book. Right, I was in a cell phone only world. Mm-hmm. So you know, as, as we age, you know, the, the younger and younger generations right. come along, our common experiences just are not the same. Well, see, and then we have to get to I don't, and you don't have it in here is network or streaming. But this is all about consumption of of media. This has nothing to do with about creating media. We look at stuff like TikTok and Instagram, and my kids and the you know the twenties and under are content creators more than they are content consumers. Yeah, they're sitting yeah. there and they're watching it on an app. Well, that's the what reason, we talked. That's what we talked about the. It's almost a peer to peer thing, right? Yeah, you watch well, what your friends put out. Well, you so talked we, about the the group chats. Yeah, we're not broadcasting. We're communicating with each other, and we send each other funny videos and. You may sit there on YouTube all day, and it's a it's some guy playing video games, right? Mm-hmm. It's somebody showing you how to fix a. It's Mark Brim showing you how to fix a Chevy truck, or or eating a Dairy Queen ice cream, ice yep. cream, or his video on uh, on seeing the uh, Boduke, the uh, Boduke oh, down yeah. in Russia. Hey, Boduke, yeah. Hey, by the way, we mentioned the ice cream. We didn't get any pictures with other pictures of miss sarah bringing the uh the uh cheese that, steak hey, in? that's for insiders only i'm that, sorry that is background we didn't content. have cheese that steak. is 
that is behind the scenes knowledge. There's a paywall there, my friend. Yeah, it was delicious. <laughs> got this is what it feels yeast. like when you get pirated. By the way, when they go around your paywall, <laughs> you don't need to Patreon. We had cheesesteak and it was delicious. <laughs> Mrs. Johnson died, and you have to pay extra to read about it. Okay, I think that's stupid. <laughs> I think, I think that that's stupid, and I've told I've told the people in charge fix this. You're the editor in chief. I don't have control of that, and it's stupid. That and I stupid. want people to be able to have access somewhat. Somewhat access I mean, to stuff paid, like that. If you paid extra to have the obituary run, shouldn't it be free for the v- people to see it on the other end? They should at least have some access to it. Yes. Yes, it absolutely should. Well, and I'm sorry that you guys can't you, get to that. I, that's out of my control. Hold on a second. You do I'm have, fighting for it right you now. You do have access to it because uh, uh, the, the funeral homes that the. Yeah, that you can go to the funeral place. homes and do that. Right. But you the, cannot share an obituary off of my, off of my newspaper's website. To family out of state, and that's stupid. There and for I, a while, I disagree with it, and I'm fighting it. There I want, for a while, I want everything us to be able on to your have something was free, which was also stupid because we were giving it all away for free. There has to be, there has to be a balance because I we, canceled my monthly subscription when I noticed that was. I <laughs> under, a lot of people <laughs> did, and it was a bad decision. <laughs> it was a bad decision for them to do that. It was not a decision that I they was made able to a influence. conscious decision to do that. I, Somebody did. They didn't ask me about it. I said, this is stupid. We're giving it all away for free. And people canceled their subscriptions, and they took money away from the paper, and they took... They yep. took. They lost revenue over a period of time. Right. And so then they, they, their response to that was to lock it down, which is also not a good idea. There's because a balance. You're, you're, not, you're only then catering to the people who are subscribers, like Jeremiah, who has a subscription, who can see it, which is great, but then you're not allowing n- potential new customers... A taste. You got to give them a taste. You got to give them some free beef before they buy the whole thing. Am I right? You guys do stuff like that. Yeah. You're like, hey, hey, come get this entire crate of corn for like two bucks, and then come back next week. Hey, it's four bucks. It's still it's still that tasty corn. Yep. That's my Cade Goger. I don't think it was a good one. I don't think that was a good one either. But, uh, but that might what be what yeah. me hoy Manoy sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you may be cursing in someone's <laughs> someone's language. Me hoy Manoy? There's someone in Vietnam going. <gasps> <laughs> you have listeners in Vietnam. We have listeners all over the world. All over the world. Truly. Are you sure? I think Truly. that and the Arctica. Hold on. The biggest foreign country that we are, are in, or the the most listeners in a foreign country that we have is, uh, I think it's Norway. I yeah. have no reason to disbelieve that. I'm, so I'm waiting for a, a Patreon member named Bjorn to show up. It's Bjorn. Thank Bjorn? you. <laughs> Bjorn? I've never had to this say that. This isn't Star Trek DS9. It's not Bjorn. Silly it's American. Bjorn. I've never seen Star Trek either. Uh, Barrett wow. Chose is the only uh, <laughs> only person I can come up with that's, uh, that's from Norway off the top of my head. Um, yeah. So uh, what do you guys do in your, your home, Mr. Koger? So I do everything through my Xbox, my Xbox One. That's what we do too. I've you just, my you, you just watch you on use one Cade's TV. Xbox. Yep. I one, use Cade's. We net. have we have <laughs> yeah, one Xbox. TV. Yep. So it goes through my Xbox. I have Hulu. I have Netflix, and I have Amazon with my Amazon. Prime I also show. use it in his bedroom too. Do you do you put a little little T-shirt or something over the Kinect so that? It yeah. makes a glow so, like the so, lights. So it's just me and Kane. <laughs> <laughs> so the Kinect can't watch you. <laughs> it's, dude, all sorts of weird gesticulation. You turn the volume up. Turn the volume There's down. A ghost in this here. is a family show, Travis. Okay. <laughs> yes, it is. I told them that Donna was watching. Thank you, Donna, by now, the way, for the, taking that. The person that, that sits in that chair, shot. it traditionally is their job to say the F word before the show's over. Too bad. Thank you, Travis. Finally, we are a respectable institution again. I don't have to hit the explicit button because Chase no. isn't here. Yeah, Chase said it last time, and he was in Cade's spot. Yeah. Yep. You never know. I yeah, could, but since... I could drop it at any time. <laughs> oh. I got some power here. It is after 8 p.m. That's all we promise. All right, so let's move on to property taxes. Travis, a few weeks ago... Travis you, like American oh, hero. Yeah, you sent me a message, and you said... Uh, you said he self booked. We we have to admit oh, Travis yeah, yeah, Travis self booked himself. You said when are you when am I coming back on to the boss hug of liberty? And I said, well, our next open date is uh, going to be. I think at that time it was like May eighth. 
right? Was it? Was that sounds it about right. Yeah, yeah, before property tax day was. Due. Then that we was had a we mind. had a long conversation about why we were having a show on a Wednesday. You were and striking then, out. Travis yeah. was striking out with Dakota, mm-hmm. and then and then I got a message being like, "Hey, I should be on your show." I'm like. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't striking out with Dakota. I was about to, you know, just give him some wine, you know, a little Jello pudding pop, you know. Oh no! Does it, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to drop the f bomb, but I will make a Cosby <laughs> reference and then, right uh, here. So uh, after he pitched the date, I said, "Yeah, that you know that that works." And then he said, "Here's the topic. We're going to talk about." <laughs> I told said, them. I told them what their topic was going to be on their show. Yeah, he did. He pitched the whole show, and I said, "Well, well, Guffy told you what to write about in tomorrow's paper, and you did it. So that makes it, 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 it's touche. That makes show notes it's easy. It, it's because so, he's my guy. Thank you, Travis. Yeah. And then, uh, so now here we are. We're at the property taxes portion of the show. We're we're done talking about television. So now we're going to be talking about the property that you watch television in, and how you have to pay the government to live in that property, even after you own it. You pay uh, double to. To watch it in your rental. <laughs> That's true. But you get... Rent- okay, we'll get there in a second. You get so, a deduction, but go ahead. Uh, the, you, you pitched this, and, and you just wanted to talk about uh, the, the property taxes in general. And I think right. it was specifically because of all of the conversations that have been going on in the county, specifically the county council. We had a, a few candidates that ran and won this year that ran on a no-abatements platform. Um, so there's been a lot of discussion in our county about this, um, but I wanted to I wanted to go back a little bit further and uh, talk about the history of property taxes in the state of Indiana and uh, where they go. So I actually found out um, that property tax is the first tax that uh, the state of Indiana had. It was the it was the only revenue source that we had in the state. It started in 1816 when we gained our statehood. Uh, that's because we were a really rural state and a very much agricultural. So we were. It was very difficult to. Yeah, you know, transactions no one, at that time. No one was buying anything. We were all growing our own food. No one went to the grocery store. Made our own clothing and everything. So our revenue source was the the property that people lived on, um, and it was uh, it was an incredibly low rate. I think that I saw it was like point two percent or something like that at the very the very start. So you you start moving forward in time and the property taxes keep growing. And that is because according to the state constitution, um, before, what was it, 2005? Yeah, during the Mitch uh, Daniels yeah. term, or Bef- one of his terms. Before then, uh, the constitution said that local boards, including waste management, um, parks and recreation boards, and cemetery boards, as well as school boards, could petition the county commissioners for raises in property taxes. So in 2002, the average property tax rate in the state of Indiana was almost 9%. It was 8.8. And there were other counties that were reaching over 10%. And Mitch Daniels came along, and whenever he started campaigning for uh, the governor's election in 2004, he said that property taxes, this is out of control. We need to get a hold of this. So in 2005, the next legislative session, the very first whenever he was governor, uh, signed into law the property tax caps, which means that we can't go past 1%. On a a principal home, 1%. No. Yeah, on a a residential home, it's 1%. That's not what happened. It's not? No. The voters of Indiana... Oh, well, yeah. Three to one voted to put a constitutional amendment in... Right to make it that make it so. So it Mitch Daniels through. might have put his name on it had as the governor. It. it was a process. But the governors, it was it the, gov- the the people voted the on when, it. Right. The way we so do don't, this, I, I don't, it was a referendum. People, people blame Mitch Daniels all the time. Seventy five percent of I'm Indiana not blaming voters do. him. I think that the property tax cap is a good thing because I think it's I think it should be illegal during, to tax my property during the administration. Right. It's my land, right? But right, but but <clears throat> it passed seventy five percent of your assembly twice. Right. It was signed by the governor. And the people of the state also voted for it, right? Because to amend the state constitution, it had right. to pass. Right, it is an it amendment. Si- in the it state was seventy-five percent. There, there are a little bit. Uh, there's a. It was. It's questionably constitutional before this. It was questionable yeah. whether or not property taxes were even authorized or accessible, acceptable. And then we put and, it in the state and, constitution. In the nineties, Republicans were still running on repeal property taxes completely, and then they put it in the constitution. We uh, put it in the constitution. I just want to keep 
going back to that, we did that. 75% of Indiana voters did that. Now I can't hear myself at all, but that's okay. They. Yeah, he, he the, took we, you from one extreme to the other. I know, that's so <laughs> weird. But anyhow, I'm, I'm just saying, like, we can go back and we can say lawmakers and we can say elected officials. It was by referendum. Right. Team Indiana effort. Voters you can see the point. This. Team effort. We, we move on, right? All right. Sorry, go ahead. I just, I want, I want, I want you know, credit skin where credit's dude. It, I'm not blaming Mitch Daniels because I think it was a good call. Okay. So... So you're thanking 75% I'm, of Indiana voters who... Thank you to the voters of Indiana back okay. whenever I was just a young, a, a young guy I, in, in elementary you were, school. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was married. <laughs> were, you, were you really? Yeah, How old are you, Travis? 34. You have to think about it that long? Yeah. Tra- uh, Travis, I went last week. I had a day where I thought I was 34 all day. Then I realized I was 35. You're 35? Yeah. You're older than I am? Yeah. When did that happen? Nah. It's Probably in the, the 80s. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much since your first birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. So let's go, Sorry, let's go, go back to property yeah, taxes. So property taxes. It, the, ladies and gentlemen, this is just how it goes whenever Travis comes on. If you we guys we love know. having Travis as a guest because he is so much fun. And it's just a free-form conversation, but it's really hard to get through topics. If you want classic Travis, go back to about episode 12, uh, Back by was, My Pool. It well, was so much fun. Was that by the pool? That was in the dining room. I think it was a poolside episode. Yeah, I think it doesn't was matter. The Doesn't the matter. One with, the one with Darren, where yeah. I repeated so, the entire episode without hearing it. Yeah. Sorry. It was, I think it's still the longest-running episode of Boss Hall. Yeah, it was two hours. Sorry. The, uh, after the property taxes were enacted, 2005, um, right. I got that part right. <laughs> I I fact checked you. You are mm-hmm. um, local government started to freak out. That was episode fourteen. Wow, that was a long time. Episode ago. fourteen. But local government started freaking out because of the property taxes, the the tax caps, because that is the, the county go- and city and the township and the local library. That is and the, the schools. The schools, yeah, that's all their main source of uh, of of money. That's where they get their budget from. Right. So to uh, counteract that, the next year, uh, the state legislature, uh, I guess the state legislature, raised the sales tax across the state by 1% and said that this is going to be allocated uh, equally distributed amongst the 92 counties in the state of Indiana. Uh, Something else that happened <laughs> is we they, they gave you a circuit. You have a circuit breaker tax cap. So in many of the properties in our county don't reach that circuit breaker yet, um, but other communities they do. So you get yep. to that hard one percent. So if, say you have a hundred thousand dollar house. We'll say we'll say a two hundred thousand dollar house. Say you have a two hundred thousand dollar house in Hamilton County. Uh, you can have a two thousand dollar year tax bill. You may have government that's too big for that. Say you have a school need, and you got to build a thirty million dollars school with a football field and a five, you know, a new a new natatorium and everything else. You we can need have the money special, for the children. You Look can at have our a new special track. Emergency, emergency only authorization that you can circumvent the circuit breaker uh, if you have a local referendum on that. That right. passes. Local voters choose but to raise their property. Tax. It is right. it is supposed to be. Very much the exception to the rule, not the rule. It's not, oh, well, here it's inconvenient. We need to do it. It needs to be, no, at least the intention at the time was it has to be for an emergency. It's not a routine, hey, we would like, or it's a need or a want. It's an emergency. But it seems to have gotten more routine. But It seems like it's happening all across the state all the time. But a number of these locations are doing it every single year. Yep. And some have been defeated. If they, Rob, if they're defeated. Rob Kendall, our friend, the legend Rob Kendall, uh, led the defeat of Brownsburg. Right. If they're yep. defeated, then the voters, they're, the, the well, taxpayers the problem, said, we don't want that. The if problem passed, with it is the, the voters are saying, yes. The lack of education from, on the voters' side whenever it comes to the school is saying they need money. Right. Right. And they're saying, we need this for the children. The right. children are in desperate need of this money. We need to make the education better for your kids. Right. You don't want your kids to get a bad education, do you? No, I understand. You know that, that and that well, is and this, that this is comes, the problem. This comes back to because Newcastle, Newcastle schools, where we're located, we're in that district. They're they're looking to have that right. that conversation. They've mm-hmm. started that conversation a year ago, and they're starting it at it in force now. So um, that will come up. 
very very soon. Every district's so, going to every everybody's going to ask, right? No, right. They, but, they're all going to they're all going to the, go and try to make the case, and and the, it, well, by see, nature, every one them. of these groups wants to grow. Yeah, it's up to it's up to any school district to to say increase my levy. It's up to them because they have a they have a. Uh, uh, Article 8 of the Indiana Constitution is about free education for kids. Now, we can Mm -hmm. sit here and argue, well, the fact that I have to pay book fees doesn't necessarily equal free free education, but what it means um, in practice is that... Good folks in Harmony, Indiana, to thank for that. Right, but what that means is that public tax dollars are going to go towards education which is what's in there what's in there and it says in our state constitution and now and we, we can we also provide go for back, the common schools yeah we can we all, can also go back and say well the federal <laughs> government said if you want to be a state you have to include this okay where where it comes back fact is it's in the state constitution so uh, article eight, eight, 18 section 18 whatever it is it says a uh, uh, common school so we have to provide that and then, since it's in the Constitution, we have to provide it, and we take money from people. The yep. state government <clears throat> takes money from people, and then we say, well, we've taken money for schools. So now, as parents, you have to send your kid to school. A- after seven years old, they have to go to school. They could be homeschool. They could be in charter school. They could be in private school. They could be in public school, but they have to be receiving some form of education because we took people's money to pay for this, is the argument. So now kids are in a building, and, I mean, we can take this back to the same argument that Henry County has made about it's jail. you got people in there that don't necessarily want to be in there, and they don't necessarily take the best care of it. So now they're in a facility, hundreds of kids, and in some districts, dozens of kids, or in this facility, and you got teachers, and you got that, and they've got upkeep. You got to take care of the facilities. So then, how do you do that if it's not through property taxes? And then, if you cap it, how do you do that without a referendum, without asking property tax owners to voluntarily increase their the amount that they pay based on where they live and the amount of <clears throat> construction? improvements they have on their land or the type of land they have like farmers have a two percent are you guys at three you guys at two uh i'm actually not sure but We're farmers right. farmers pay yeah. i think they, farmers they are it. i only i only pay property tax on my house that i own i don't own any farm ground yet so I think but, farmers but you also have three you also have like hundreds of acres yeah. so it's it's that's the it's, thing yeah. it's exponential over yeah. my acre so I almost so put then, those percentages in the show yeah. notes, but I'm pretty sure it's three percent. I, I think two percent is, is for commercial. Let's see, I thought it was switch. I thought it was two percent for was owner your... occupied, two percent oh. for residential property and farmland, three percent for all other properties. Oh, that's so a commercials three percent. So farmers, you're, you're farmers have uh, been business owners out because we love you as as lawmakers, and also say. because they own thousands of acres, yeah. hundreds hundreds to thousands. So, so but but then. If you can't to go back to the education for for our kids, you know, and, and whatever they whatever they build, whatever they build, how do you pay for that? Something that is constitutionally required. It's required. We have to have it right. based on yeah. the right. So then, the how do you finance that? And and so do we say okay? Do we send our kids to these schools that are substandard? Right. And, and by substandard, we got you know you got. 45 kids in a room with one teacher. Not that any, no school in Henry County is like this. I, I was the education reporter for four years. Every classroom in Henry County is very nice. They could be better, and, and I'm not arguing that at all because there are teachers who tell me, hey, we need this, this. You this. don't have anything at the extreme you're getting But distract. we don't have the extreme like we've seen in those classrooms out in, where they have the walkouts out west where like the rooms were falling in and the books like were tattered. In, in Terre Haute places. <laughs> Western United States. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the Indiana. state. No, like they were the bad one, like the really, really bad. One. Oh, the, I know what you're talking. I think the, it was like the, Utah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. There, it was Cody horrible. Johns might be able to tell us more about that. Yeah, yeah. Patreon member. <laughs> right. So, so, but Henry County has has very nice facilities, and and all the schools here, they're just like, man, we could do better, and there are different reasons they want to do that. Yeah. So. How do you do that? How did the schools do that as a government agency without raising taxes? 
And if they can't raise taxes past the tax caps, then it is they give they're giving the choice right to the taxpayers and property owners. And that's what I'm saying. Is is it I th- no I, I I think I that choose to in the in the in the system that was implemented that was the best choice. Yeah. By giving the local by giving the local citizenry the option of whether or not I wanted to pay more. Right. However, I think that it's been taken advantage of. And I think that the that the schools use the children as ammunition and collateral to try to get whatever money they want for whatever pet project that the board sees it needs right now. I think maybe that's happened in other communities in Indiana. Oh, I haven't seen it here. I'm not but, blaming but yeah. any of the Well, I just want to draw here. the differentiation there because this actually sort of goes back to the conversation we had with the Patreon members. What's the difference in the media and local media? Right. We can sit there all day and be like, well, schools do this and that, and they should do this and that. Well, yes, but our schools don't do that. The well, last, we haven't seen the big, it yet. The big last project that uh, last time there was a, a big project in Henry County was the softball diamonds just got built at Tri High School. They did, but it wasn't for Knight's a referendum. Town. Town no, it wasn't a school. referendum. No, no, it wasn't a referendum though. And I was Knight's Town I thought referendum? you were just talking about projects in general. Well, well, I know no Newcastle was twenty years ago when Newcastle High School expanded, but Knight's Town High School. Knight's Town was built in roughly two thousand five. Was it 2005? Somewhere in that range. And then there was the softball diamond, but that was not through. That was not through. Probably just a. a, a, It was a. It was a a general bond, and I think common school loan. I am assuming that uh, Travis's recollection of something being out west was the Rogers High School walkout in October of last year, uh, which was in Newport, Rhode Island, which is definitely out west of somewhere. No, (laughs) then that's clearly not what I was talking about. I'm not talking about just the walkout. I'm talking about the school that was rotting. Yeah, and the books. I remember were... exactly what you're yeah. talking about. It was very clearly not. I remember Rhode seeing Island. the videos. What? Who was your geography teacher in tenth grade, Jeremiah? <laughs> I taught myself. It's Newport, really? Rhode Island, is like the most eastern you can yeah. get. Yeah, it's like <laughs> right next to Roanoke. <laughs> Do I have to spell out the the joke of Travis thinking that Rhode Island was out west and then him trying to turn it on? <laughs> so the I look forward to my retraction. I want to talk the Thursday's news. paper of next week, uh, Travis. I want to talk yeah. to you a little bit about uh, you, the editor in chief of the Courier Times. Yeah. Had an opinion. Did you it, a piece in the paper? Did you still uh, title that, dear editor, or, or how did you do that? <laughs> I like to. I like to. <laughs> yeah, letters to the editor. It was under the opinion page, and I I do appreciate that you referenced it as an opinion piece and not an article. Yeah, it was, it was an opinion page. piece. It was a, and, it was a column. Yeah. But uh, how many columns do you expect yourself to write a year? Uh, Once a month. Once a month is a high bar. I would like to, but it takes a lot of energy. Sometimes I'll just sit. At one and, time, and I got really fired up and said that I was going to write a letter to the editor once a month. Every 30 days. That's part of our policy. Yeah. And then you that didn't. never happened. I, I'm the editor. I don't get correspondence from Dakota Davis. I haven't written a letter to the editor since you've been the editor. <laughs> <laughs> That's I how long remember, it's been. I do remember getting one from you, though. Dakota Davis, chair of... Or those are press, press releases. releases. Those are different. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't I've count s- those as once I, a month. Um, those are official correspondence. When, but so you I, had the letter, you yeah. had the opinion piece in, and you talked about, um, you mentioned the your fair share of property taxes. You also yeah. mentioned that you don't pay property taxes. Yeah, I started with because I you're, don't pay property taxes. Because you're an American hero. Well, and, no, it's because, I, it's because I'm a VA... Um, VA, uh, you're you're veteran. technically a, a disabled veteran. Yeah, right? so you're like one of those veterans that the president doesn't like, like John McCain when he got captured. You're no, the same. No, he, d- he doesn't Mc- like guys that got hurt. No, he doesn't like guys that got caught. That got I caught. What he said, but, uh, but but no, I am not like John McCain at all. But you you mentioned the fair share, and that was because uh, uh, one of our our local county council members, one of one of the new members that uh, campaigned on this platform of no abatements. Mainly they were talking about wind, but it was uh, in talking to them on our show in different, uh, in different pieces of uh, media, like you guys in the, the Middletown paper, became clear that uh, they kept saying no abatements. And they, they, they wouldn't specify that it was for the wind farms because they, wanted to, they were trying to rid themselves of the label of single-issue candidates, right? That was the, the strategy. They didn't want to be labeled single issue candidates, so they ran on this platform of not having abatements. Well, Boar's Head asked for new abatements, right? They asked for a new tax abatement. What was it? Six years, hundred percent. They they didn't 
I I don't know how that conversation went. Whether yeah, they I'm asked not for I'm it, not privy but, to the right, private but, conversation. But what Have we, the, does anybody ask for a freedom of information request? Well, but what the conver what the recommendation was from right. the local from economic the economic, economic development, development was a and I and if I get these numbers wrong, I'm sorry, but I believe it's a six year one hundred percent tax abatement on a, a potential third piece of property. Yep. For a so as and a, as and a, these as an offer and these say, specific county here, council members that here. campaigned on no tax abatements, it, it the tax abatement passed it from the council unopposed. Eventually, um, it it eventually so the vote the was final vote was unanimous. Yeah, yeah the final the vote final was vote seven. eventually there was, was discussion, unanimous. but the final the final vote. Was, but was in unanimous. the discussion, there was talk of why don't these people pay their fair share? Yes. That is the particular comment that you had. That you had. That was the with. one that jumped up. That was the one that jumped up to. I read that and I thought that it sounded very bad, especially if we're talking about our supposed Republican County Council, the people who campaign on fiscal responsibility, freedom for people, lower taxes, and fiscal. Or I already said fiscal responsibility. You get the idea. They well, campaigned they... as conservative Republican people. And now you start talking like Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders saying that you need to start paying, <laughs> everyone needs to pay their yeah, fair you've got, share. Yeah, you've got, you know, a $5 million uh, uh, what, you're company not, out there. Yeah. Why aren't you paying your fair share? And the conversation was had, and it was by several people. And again, I don't have my notes, so I'm not going to quote anybody, but it was. Yeah, I don't have my many, notes. Many I don't people, have any notes either. That's why many I'm not people, dropping names. Yeah, went and, um, <laughs> and they talked about the. It was the city the, council, I know. The idea, well, the idea. <laughs> The argument that was made. Pretty sure I was at that county meeting too. Right. Well, you left. I had to. I know. No, I know. You had. You had much more important things to do. <laughs> uh, but the uh, I stayed for the whole thing. Um, it's just my job. Um, In the so, drive-by media, we just get the clips we need and we move on. Yeah, to the next you get thing. the soundbite, you leave. Uh, no, but but the argument that was made um, from from council members from. Um, uh, members of uh, uh, government departments from residents was that this uh, this proposed at that time because the vote hadn't been taken yet the proposed tax abatement would um, potentially create jobs or allow it would it would, it would, it would allow them to can you to, continue growing yeah to, and then entice more jobs right and then those jobs those people would raise um, would would Make income. And they so you got they would live. They would have income taxes, they and they would, would live in, live in properties. And now property we know that people up. who live here don't necessarily spend their money here because they work in other places, right? And that makes sense. But you know, somebody who works at the Newcastle Boar's Head might be getting gas at the Spiceland Flying J, you know, which does multiple things. It pays the sales tax and it pays fuel tax, et cetera, et cetera, and it all adds up. It's all pennies that add up. So, or they might they might locate here and buy a house here and drive up the property t property values. Right. No, absolutely. And, so by the way, the Newcastle the things... real estate market is blazing hot. Right. Yeah. Stuff. If, if you put a house on the market right now, if it's worth anything, it's gone in a week. Yeah. One of the things, things that uh, Rex Bell talked about a lot in his 2016 gubernatorial race. I love Rex. Rex is yeah. Rex is, Rex awesome. is a hero. Uh, a, a real American hero. He's a real. American hero. Um, Been swinging that hammer for something like fifty years. <laughs> Anywho, so. Rex uh, in his he he was putting out these graphics that had quotes from him on them and like pictures of him in the background at his workbench and stuff. You know how the, how these media do. campaigns work. Right. So he one of his favorite one of his quotes that he said, which is a personal favorite of mine, is that is well actually he's got a few. But anyway, he, he said that we need to lower everybody's taxes. And specifically, we need to get rid of the property tax. And that is something that Jeremiah took hold of during his uh, campaign in 2018 for the county council. Well, you ran on to, a no abatement. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, I but knew. it wasn't a no abatement just because we don't like wind farms. It was no abatement because... Property taxes are wrong. It's not equal protection under the law. Yeah. I'd rather lower everybody's taxes than in one individual one. I don't think we should be politicizing or playing pick, picking winners and losers. I understand the policy and the need for it, and it's one of the few tools that the council has and that the Economic Development Corporation has. I understand all of that. 
But as a general rule, uh, I'm not in favor of it. I think it's a race to the bottom. I think I would much I rather lower been, everybody's lower everybody's taxes. Yeah, I think it's been. Uh, it was interesting. I heard somebody say a year, two years ago. Um, well, because the argument was made, why don't we just lower everyone's property taxes? And they said, well, as an example, well, L&K Produce can ask for an abatement. And, sure. And, like, well, shouldn't, should they not have to would be, yeah. would be a Listen, question. Listen, I, I, I've made but, the contention that my swimming pool uh, is an economic development item in our com- community. I host pool parties throughout the year. People come in from all over the state, all over the country, <laughs> and I provide economic true. activity in this community. So I think that it would only be appropriate for the people of Henry County to untax my home. To and I want, I want a parties. 100% tax abatement for the next 10 years for my personal residence because I attract people to the community. And I put people in hotels. I put people in Stacks restaurant. They don't stay the in park hotels. restaurant. Don't oh lie. yeah, absolutely. They do. Yes. I have people. I've had people book hotels to stay at my pool parties. Henry County Hotel. Henry County Hotel. You don't like your guests. <laughs> I've, I listen, man. I only have so much space. So he, he's had so the Steve Alford people from Knox okay. County. And the Steve, Steve Alford. Alford and he's had the, people from Knox County and, come and, and stay. Tree. And the Rain Tree. They just put they two have, million dollars in. They that. have received guests because of my pool party. I can demonstrate economic activity because of that. Well, so therefore. My home is something that should be applying. Have for, you asked for it? I think we're going to ha- probably have to work with the Economic Development Corporation and ask for it and have a formal meeting. Ask for it. I think that would be a fantastic wait until, story uh, in the local paper. We'll wait and do it live on air whenever the next time Corey decides to come on. <laughs> <laughs> I can, Get the proper paperwork I filed wager, and hand it to him. I can wager that he will be very thoughtful about how he answers that request. Corey's a Patreon member. That's and, awesome. And yeah. I think I think it's probably reasonable to ask for uh, my neighbors uh, to create a TIF district to improve our road for my for my home and my needs and the the needs of the business. Mike the, Royals uh, is of, in of the, the chat, here. and he's fact checking us. Your city, the by city the way, and county are already forcing you to pay for new uh, poop pipes. You want them to pay for new roads too? I'm just, I'm just thinking of the opportunities we have. Mike Burroughs is in the fat, in, in the. <laughs> he's that. in the chat and he is fact Ma- checking Mike us. Mike says that I don't get an abatement on new, on new. So I, I guess maybe I need an abatement on any new mechanicals so that if I do. You add a so if I, if we, if we go in and replace the, uh, the pool cover and we make an upgrade to the. Uh, to the, uh, the to the heating system, it's a slide. and maybe the uh, maybe we add a slide right. and a diving board, and we make some. Uh, I could sell you. The, I could sell you some property to put a a pool on. That would be new. Hold but on. really, why? Hold on. You want him? You want Jeremiah <laughs> to build a pool on on your farm? Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. If I can use it, that'd be great. <laughs> Can I get water for my cattle? There? All right. If we so call it a lagoon, the, what, what are you going to do to it? Cows could just come drink. You can't chlorinate it, though. You wouldn't be able to yeah. chlorinate. It'd have to be we'll open use, air. Yeah. Yeah. Is so what if, I, to, what if I offer, what if I, I say I'm going to pack up my pool and I'm going to move it? I'm going to move it to Baltimore. Will the General Assembly step like in? Like a reverse Indianapolis Colts? Yeah, exactly. Okay. What if I say I'm going to pack up my pool and you guys can't come and watch the things that happen at my pool? And I want the cap, the Indiana Capital Improvement Board, to uh, to pitch in and pay me money to keep my pool well, here. File for it. What happens if I do that? File for it. Why? The, the, the point of all of this satire no, is I it's understand. arbitrary as hell, hey, right? You know what? Stephen Be- Colbert created and if a pack. I, if I do go it. in, if I go in and start lobbying the state house, well, if you look at what's happened this year, you know, right now, if you look, the Indianapolis Star this morning, ten o'clock in the morning, I looked at the Indy Star. And it looked corrupt as hell, Hold right? On. Are you so, are you saying are you trying to just uh, left hand slap me in the face because no. you could get on Indie Star's website and you couldn't? Get no, on my it's, website? that's your own guilt that's telling you that your website's broken. <laughs> I'm, I feel but convicted. I, but I went I went hashtag, to the Indie Star today about ten targeted. o'clock this morning. The the website that I pay to use and it actually worked. It told me about how the state of Indiana was going to go from hey we we cut a deal where there was going to be a hundred million dollar transfer to move a casino license from Lake, Lake County to Vigo County. They said no, actually, maybe it's not going to cost them but twenty million dollars. There was a story oh, about a backroom 20. deal that was cut for the CIB to save the Pacers in the Indy Eleven, and it was going to be a few hundred million dollars in in, uh, in revenue. And then there was a story about Scott. Uh, I think it's Scott Pruitt. I don't know. Scott, the, Scott Bayo. Scott. No, 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 no. The the EPA guy. So close. Who's uh, who's who's lobbying on uh, on energy in Indiana? Mm-hmm. I think his name is Scott Pruitt. He's also a race car driver, so who knows? There's. Uh, Can we just say <laughs> Scott Bayo? No. 
ask Mike. Mike can look it up. We'll keep talking. Don't no stop 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 googling. Hey, when I come on your podcast, we'll do uh, we'll do what you want. <laughs> this, by the way, this is the generation we live Prue in, where it. we can't yep. just keep Scott having Prue a conversation. It. We have to stop and immediately Google this stuff. I we call like people out on purpose. Somebody's gonna yeah. It, it is Scott yeah they can fact Why check doubt it. myself? It was Scott Pruitt all along. Scott Bayo. Scott Pruitt. Yeah. Okay. Charles anyway. in charge of our days. Well, you are and old. And our nights. I know. <laughs> I'm older than you. In spirit. Yeah. And in no. white hair mm. all over my face. <laughs> anyway, I used to, I used to you, look at, you look at what's happening there and you realize that it, it, it's, it, it's not, the optics are not good at, from the state level. And they're the ones that design the system that we play with at the county level. Yep. Right. And, and so, and I've heard it, and that was again a, a part of the conversation about the abatement was that if if the other 92 counties in 50 states didn't also have the option to do abatements and make themselves more attractive, then we wouldn't necessarily use that either. We have that. I think it just the idea and which I and I wrote the column and and people who read the that column understand the reason I started by putting myself out there as I don't pay property taxes is because I was about to make some points and, and, and how dare I look like a hypocrite of saying, hey, well, you this, this, and this, when I myself don't pay property tax. It's, it's public record. You can go on the tool, and I step-by-step I step show people how to get there. I don't. And, and it's because I, I qualify for and take certain deductions. When... I mean, so you could choose to just pay I, I could extra choose, taxes, right? Right. I could choose not to take the deductions. And, and this, this uh, opportunity was presented to me um, recently. I, I got divorced a year ago, and I, I personally bought my house from myself and my ex-wife because we were both on the mortgage. And it was a long process. But when it came back and we finally got the paperwork uh, sent to the county recorder or, or – the you have to refile for your exemptions again. Right. And it goes in there. And they called me. And, and, and thank God we live in a small town um, where people recognize people. And, and, I, and I hope that they would have called me. Even if you even weren't if in I charge wasn't, of the, even the, if I wasn't the, the printing newspaper. presses of the community. Yeah. Um, the Gutenberg, as they say. I, I like to call myself the Goot. Um, it's an old Steve Gutenberg reference yeah. for you kids from the 80s. But, uh, but they called me and they <laughs> said, hey, we got your, your document. We're filing your, your mortgage paperwork. They didn't elect the homestead deduction on this. And I said, well, that's interesting. It's definitely can my homestead. We, can we do that? I still live there. And she goes, yeah. She, and I was like, well, what about my veterans, uh, my, my disabled vet deduction? She goes, no, that's there. But your, your homestead's not there, which I thought was weird. So I figured I'd give you a call, see what you want to do. It's going to save you some money. And I said, I appreciate it. Thank you. Let's put that in there. And she put it in there, and it's filed, and it's correct. I had the option to say, no, don't give me that deduction. Um, and I, I didn't take it because it, it's a lot of money. It really is. But if we really want to reform the welfare state in America across the 50 states, we get rid of the homestead deduction because everyone who lives in their home, I would say, I would wager 99% of everyone who lives in the home that they purchase takes the homestead deduction. And the renters that live in the home that somebody else purchased take the renter's deduction. They sure do. Because it's available to them. The renter's deduction is different because you pay an extra 2% or is it 2% right. we did that earlier? So 2% of the property value is getting paid. The renter's deduction is merely, I think, $6,000. I think it's $500 times still, 12 months. But it's still so there. It's, it's, yeah, but it's, it's minuscule in difference because you're, you, know, you have a 3.4% tax rate you pay on your income, and you get to deduct, say you made, I don't know, Travis. But it you made, still exists. Say you made $100,000 last year, you get to deduct $6,000 from that. So now you pay taxes on $94,000. Well, in, then, don't, in then don't take the renter's deduction. That's what I'm saying. Like, you don't have to take the renter's deduction. You can still give that $6,000 to... We could make life a whole lot easier and get rid of property taxes, get rid of income taxes. You want to take care of the welfare taxes. states. No. Stop taking half of people's money away from them. Right. Well, you're talking right off the, right off the cut. Right off your yeah. right off your income or, or everything. Yeah. 
Everything. Because so so can we go? I'm into, in favor of a fair tax to, system. If we're right, going to be well, completely transparent, but that's over. way off the rails. Yeah. Well, did we get to? Uh, the so I wanted to no. This is the this is the last the last point in the property tax right. portion of the show. Then we are going to be removing to the reporter <laughs> slash producer desk with Chris Guffey to talk about this Newcastle city election. Once again, you're listening to the Boss Hog of Liberty podcast on the We Are Libertarians Network. Uh, Final thing in property taxes, the revenue distribution in the state of Indiana. So uh, for every dollar, every dollar, well, Travis, not you, Cade, for every dollar that you pay in property taxes, you're not you're not even a good example because you don't live in an in a incorporated town. Well, what about, no, we can talk about if we can, because I, when I talked to your uh, grandfather, I interviewed your grandfather okay. for the uh, uh, newspaper, a story we were doing. I keep, your, keep your mouth right in front of that mic. I got Travis. turned down because he's I was not, too loud. He's not very good at this broadcasting thing. He's real good behind a keyboard. So, keyboard. so anyway, I interviewed your grandfather, <laughs> uh-huh. right, um, for a story. I don't even remember what it was about. <laughs> but if you would get me the Janet Jackson headphones so I could just wear it like this and then dance, <laughs> it, I would dance for you. Nobody people. wants you to dance. No, so anyway. you'd have to flash everybody. Oh. Please keep the show <laughs> moving. We're not going to have another record long podcast, sorry. please. But, but my point is, I, I did. I, Talk to your grandfather who started L and K, yeah, and and did own all the property. And he m- did mention the fact he mentioned property taxes, and he mentioned all the uh, the various taxes that come when you own a significant amount of land, and then you want to distribute it to the family and 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 the stuff like that. So that, and I think he mentioned uh, doing that now, so that when he dies, the government doesn't do it. Was, yeah. was his point. Succession planning. Yeah. yeah. See, thank you. Yeah. Um, and the idea, you know, that's your estate tax. Mm-hmm. I don't own enough, you know, my crap doesn't account for an estate, you know. So Here's I Here's three work. bucks and two silver quarters, kids. I, I wish I had two <laughs> silver quarters. Are you crazy? That stuff is not like 17 cents yeah. an ounce Ooh. right now. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, when you have, when you have a, Someone who's been, you know, owning and accumulating property. I'm as we're talking, we're I'm looking up these. Dakota Davis owns two parcels. You land baron, you <laughs> two yeah. parcels. But but you know, you, that's that's a concern that I don't have. That Dakota might one day because he's a young Donald Trump. You know, working on his real estate. Are you going to open a hotel? Is it <laughs> yeah, just going to say in Spice Dakota? <laughs> are you opening? The- are you going to open the hotel in Spiceland? No, and the oh. other parcel is just going to be. A sky rise, but see, the parcel's not very big, so it's just going to be, uh, you know. Like, just straight up. It's just going to be, <laughs> Just yeah, an elevator with a room. You it's going to be, yeah. An <laughs> elevator and then a room on each floor. That's awesome. Poor, poor Kate About 600 pay, stories, though, so you do the math. Poor Kate has to pay $1,800 a year in property taxes. The the Davis parcel is $359. You're getting screwed, Kate. <laughs> You're getting screwed, Kate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good thing you don't have a pool on you that. You need to have a senior 359? citizen. 359? Yeah. I paid way... No, that is, that's the other parcel. That's, not, to, that's parcel that's one. Not, yeah, that's parcel one. And I'm the one that's stopping your show? <laughs> <laughs> he's... he's, he's <laughs> Hey, it's my, it's my show. I, I understand. Listen, all I, right. I didn't accuse me of stopping for the, the show. Average, for the average citizen, say, if you live in... Uh, yeah, the other one was like 30. If you live in Newcastle, Indiana... Then every dollar that you pay in property taxes, the county gets 19 cents. Your township gets three cents. The city of Newcastle would collect 24 cents. Your local school district, Newcastle, uh, Newcastle School Corporation, would collect 42 cents. And then the Newcastle Public Library would get four cents. And then it says other units, but usually that is your waste management collects seven cents. You have the park on this list? Well, here's no. the uh, here's the why on there. I that understand other units. I'm, yeah, they would be like that your park cents. and health health department. I understand now why when the uh, did solid you say wind? Did I hear wind? I'm sorry. When oh. wh- when, <laughs> when, <laughs> when 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 the uh, solid waste management district uh, when they um, increased their assessment, and my understanding at the time was this is a tax. This is a tax. Stop calling it an assessment. It's a tax. It's not, though. A tax is a percentage. An assessment, and, and maybe we could call it a fee, but an assessment is across the board, er body. It's a pays this. level fee. It is a level fee across the board. So, um, now here's the thing that, but I'm just saying, like, that's an option. That's something that we have. That is a, an example. The, 
uh, solid waste management assessment and also the uh, Blue River Conservancy District, which goes to help. Um, it's flood uh, control for our region. Flood control, which for and people who don't understand um, the uh, what the Conservancy District, the service that they provide. It keeps the ducks safe. I, I'm a huge fan of infrastructure. Um, which is best described by John Oliver, I think, as anything in a movie that blows up is generally <laughs> infrastructure. That's what it is. You don't care about it until it stops working. If we didn't have the Blue River earthen, they call them earthen structures, they're dams, you know? If we didn't have those, um, Aldi and that whole strip mall and the, uh, we uh, have what used to be good ones, uh, we have uh, Hubler now, this uh, down the hill here. Would just be a marsh. And we have was. a tremendous amount of flood control in our community. We need it. Uh, yeah. yeah, there. I mean, there are. You, obviously, Westwood Lake is recreational, and people go to that. Uh, but I think there's about seven uh, in, uh, dams in the Big Blue River watershed uh, between Henry County and Northern Rush County. Well, Summit Lake. It Summit Lake Summit was. Lake. Yeah, Summit Lake was originally a part of that. Now it's a state park, and so it's not a part of the conservancy district. But Gid- I think it's Gideon Lake, and there's a there's an unnamed one up by um, Hillsboro. Sure is. Um, and then on down the line, even mm-hmm. down to Woods Lake and Carthage, are all in that chain. Right. So they catch parks. the water. There's one just north of the, or over by the landfill. Another another one. And basically, what they're doing is they're holding back the rainwater so that they can mm-hmm. release it slowly over time. Right. Because so, we're the headwaters of. Pretty much the entire country, right so here. Now, All the rivers start right here in Henry County. Now, that comes back to me. <laughs> it's true. So, so that makes I, – I asked the question. If they didn't put that assessment on every property that water falls on before it gets there, how would we pay for that flood control? Yeah, it's all a matter – you know, it, it's a matter of being pragmatist, right? Um I, I'm not picking a fight on on those. Th- those well, those are somewhat reasonable, right? Uh, and but and it, it's I'm the, just using that as an example. Like, how do you pay for it? Because there's some people who go, I don't care, I don't care, I don't want to pay that. And I've said that. I was like, well, I don't want to pay. But I'll, I'll tell you, I use my recycling. My I pay for my recycling. I use my recycling. Yeah, I saw the couches in the paper that you put out there. I last week. never put non recyclables, and I wouldn't illegally dump. That's. That, see, stuff like that irritates me when people do that. But yeah, but so I it's recycle. called the tragedy of the commons. Let's uh, let's let's move on to our journalist and reporter Chris Guffey. Are the we going to turn the desk. camera? To Chris? no, we don't turn no. the camera. Oh, we'll, just, we'll, we'll he's, handle directorial. He's a dis- I will <laughs> describe. I will describe Chris Guffey is uh, he has stolen the look of Dakota Davis today. Uh, Chris has uh, worn his sunglasses to work. He is uh, he's wearing a. A uh, white T-shirt covered up in—I feel like I'm uh, describing a 4-H uh, runway model—a uh, pineapple and palm tree uh, Hawaiian shirt, ho- uh, tropical shirt. What would you call that, Chris? That's a Jimmy uh, Buffett shirt. It's kind of yeah, like a Margaritaville. Tropical Margaritaville. Margaritaville, yeah. Jimmy Buffett. Yeah, exactly. He stole that from my closet. I well, have several. Okay. Jimmy so you, you basically so I was you just, just wore that to trigger trout to trigger trigger Dakota. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh my gosh! I've never seen you dressed like this before in your life. Never. I was like, you look good, Chris. You thank, look professional. Thank you. I was like, this is Dakota's look, and I was like, I gotta take this. Dakota has and never then, worn a Jimmy Buffett shirt. Bull crap! I I, I wear Jimmy Buffett shirts. Kate, I have. A <laughs> Kate, check it. Doesn't he? Look. I have a really cool, uh, sky blue. Button down, collared shirt, collared, short sleeve, collared, collared. I said collared. He said collared greens. I heard. And him. then, uh, yeah, and it is baby sky blue with large full collar pineapples all over it. That's gorgeous. I'm gonna <laughs> next time I'm on Jimmy Buffett all around. Shout out I to got... my mother in law for tailoring all of those shirts for me. Tailored them for you? Yeah, she did. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. she can. Don't she get fit pudgy. Some shirts for me. She can. Don't get pudgy, Dakota. We'll have to talk after the show. I need some. (laughs) All right. So, reporter Chris, you've been working on a story because the Courier Times refused to cover it. What can you tell us? Well, on April 22nd, our the CFA fours, which is the finance like reports of expenditures and contributions, was due at noon in the Henry County Election Office. Yes, yes, at the Henry County Election Office, where you cannot take cell phones. Because it's inside device. the Justice Building, and yes. I can explain that to you, but nobody, later. it's, uh, no, no, you're right, no one, no nobody one. cares. You can't, you can't. So anyways, um, so I filed mine Unless at you're an attorney. 8 o'clock 
that morning. And so you I, beat the deadline. Yes, beat the deadline by four hours. I, I actually, I, and I checked. Did, when you got there, did you notice any candidates illegally parked on the way in? No, I no, did not. Every, okay, all right, everybody good. All right. I was the only candidate there that I know that I saw. Just checking. It's, it's, it's stories, man. <laughs> Anyways. Content. Yeah. Clickbait. Any, yeah, sorry. Anyway, so I put mine in at 8, and I checked all the ones that were currently there. Where did you park? I parked across the street, like, right, right. right across the front door. God okay. dang it, let Chris tell his story. <laughs> so, we anyway. so close to this not being explicit. <laughs> I just want to meme. Close. I just want to meme where Chris parked. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is me. Anyways, um, so there was Jeff Hancock had already filed, Jerry Walden had filed, uh, Glenn Ryan had filed, and then I filed. I was number four. Um, nobody else had filed, so I left. Then I had a uh, lunch meeting in town, so I drove here from work, and I was like, "Well, it's one o'clock. I'm going to swing by and just check the finances on everybody." Well, I get there. And only Aaron Dickin and Lisa Crosby had filed. So that's six out of the 11 on the ballot. So I, I sent a message. Uh, I messaged everyone. You started I, your news. You put it on your reporter hat and started contacting each of the I candidates. was investigating, yes. I wondered why they did not. Um, I got a hold of Brenda Greider, and she just... I think I think what the correct term was she filed it at one, uh, a little late, and she just I think she might have lost track of time, and then Mark Coger got a hold of me as well. Um, he answered back. He filed his around two thirty three o'clock somewhere around there, so he was late. And as far as I know, no one else has filed. That's not accurate. So. Ooh. He said, "As far as he knows, he, left, I, I, he I left the window I'm open." Just, I know. I'm just educating him. Do we need? I, a, do we need to spend a dollar and to buy the courier tomorrow? Or are you guys as still far as I know, everybody's it's two dollars for a daily. <gasps> what? Yeah, I know. They should subscribe. Wow. If you subscribe, it's much cheaper. So, so everybody has filed. Used My be, understanding it used to be a quarter, Grandpa. Huh? Yeah, what? back when your grandpa was a kid and buying the newspaper. So they were just late. Yeah. So I, as far five? as I know. Everyone has filed. We will fact check that. But you'll see tomorrow. it tomorrow in the paper. Yeah, you can fact check it in the Courier because it's accurate. I'm not. Well, I, I, hope, I hope at 6 o'clock tomorrow, tomorrow morning story I refresh the page and it works. Why set deadlines if they're not going to make them? Yeah. Well, they, they that's, mean, that's a question. There's a, there's a deadline <laughs> set and there's a procedure in place. So if you didn't make it by the noon filing deadline, uh, there is a fine in place. The election yeah. board will send a letter and you'll get fined and you pay the fine or you go appeal it. It seems at very the next election board meeting. inefficient. So it's uh, $50 I, a day, right? Uh, it, there are different fines depending upon the office you're running for. I don't, know, I don't have it memorized. I've, I've not been fined by the county. I've only been fined by the state. So I don't remember <laughs> the, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the fee structure for the county. And it, it, it's always recommended, even if you're going to file something, if you're slightly off, file it, and you can always amend it, and you won't get yourself fined. Yep. You can always amend. Because uh, dollars are... Whenever... Dollars are precious in campaigns. Exactly. And on that note, um, of the eight, yeah, what kind of reporting did you have? So of the eight total, right here, um, that that I know about, because you know, because not everybody had filed when you got in. Exactly. There. By, At by the one deadline, o'clock. Yeah. By the deadline. So they had not filed, and so by the so what I have my information is Jeff Hancock has zero. Jerry Walden has seventy dollars on hand from last reporting period. Glenn Ryan has three thirty. Um, Aaron Dickin has zero. Mark Coger has zero. Lisa Crosby has zero, and I have one thousand five hundred and eighty-five dollars on hand. That sounds about right. So, so my so Chris Guffey is not going to mount to the water. Right well, now, yeah, yeah. that I know of, I don't know. Well, right, I don't know what yeah. the mayor has. I know that we. I I believe there will be a special pull out. Tomorrow. Not a pull out, like a whole page, but there is a special. Is there an insert? No. Is no, it an no, analog not. only, not for the digital people? No, no, no. It's it's included as far as I know. There is a, a special highlight. How how's that? A highlight of the person who reported the highest. Uh, a feature. 
CFA. What is each? It's part of the story, but it's a it's a it's an info box. Okay. Is it a me, a Mario? <laughs> I don't remember. You have to buy a paper tomorrow and find out. Uh, I will not buy a paper. Do you, uh, do you, need, do you need the Career Times login along with my Netflix and my everything else? <laughs> <laughs> you, you laugh about that, but I have no, no. This is why Netflix. <laughs> this is why Netflix is going up, because everybody yeah. can just share. No, Netflix has a, has a share plan. They have different profiles. They have, I, well, I know. But so, some of these have companies one, two, recognize three. that you have multiple profiles. I will say, when they announced that they were going up, I went down in package. I don't have the I don't have the ultimate package anymore. We don't need to stream HD. Yeah, I'm good. We use my in laws, so I have no. I have idea. Comcast well, internet. It's not like I'm going to get it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <suggest>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will suggest for all of you Netflix users, Netflixians, the Umbrella Academy. The first three minutes is super weird, and then it gets weirder. I watched the first episode. Dude, keep going. All right, I'll so oh, one last one check last thing with the city I'm out update. Of stuff to watch. Um, it's good. <laughs> it's by the dude, the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. Oh, really? Jared Way, something like that. Anyway. Oh, cool. We we reported before the Courier Times did about uh, everything going on with the Castle Theater. What happened at the City Council meeting last week? Um, and uh, we we also talked about the uh, the bathroom at the fourteen hundred Plaza first. So uh, just so you know, <laughs> we're doing we're doing really good over here. Yeah, you're doing the people's work. Good On, for you. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to give you some more crap before we before we signed off for the evening. Oh, okay. I I I like what you guys are doing. I think it's great for you know a once a week uh, streaming niche. It very is. very very marginal. Do you have readers in Hawaii? <laughs> because we have supporters in Hawaii. <laughs> For being awesome. once a week, it's it's awfully funny when we break the story before the courier time. No, says. it's fantastic. I yeah. think it's great. I think you guys have a lot more control over when you can release your content. The good thing you. about this platform, though, is that last week I went off. Why why are you breaking those? No, I think are you great. jealous <laughs> and you're just starting to break the equipment? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sabotage. These were pretty cheap on Amazon. Don't go too rough on them. <laughs> no, this is fantastic. Don't so, don't dismiss what your Patreon supporters do for you. I, They're phenomenal. But I, I can't wait to thank I Travis paid, Week. I paid for week. these out of my my own pocket. Are you listed as a Patreon supporter? No. We you should be. Uh, yeah. Anyways, sorry. Uh, okay, so. Uh, but I do want I do want to say one thing that's valuable about this platform versus the paper is that we have... Uh, the people who are reporting the stories is that you also get a side of the commentary, right? Because uh, we, we are as factual as we possibly can be while we are all working multiple jobs, including this one, uh, to give the people the facts, but also give them the commentary of what we actually think. The courier by contrast does a great job by giving people just the facts, right, right, and That's a little we, fake news. Well, we try to give, we try to present. Yeah, we, it's not in our platform is not to tell people what this means. I can explain to you, or I guess well, I you can, can explain, explain what it means, what, but what it not means. how you should feel about right. it. I well, I don't try to explain way. how people should feel about it. I just explain how I feel about it. Right. I don't. And if you're going to be... Uh, as like, I'll do an opinion piece and tell right. them my heart. But when I write a story on, let's say, and I haven't seen it yet, but let's say there's a story on a, let's say there's a, a crime story and it's particularly heinous and it's something that I feel passionately about and I hope the guy or, or, or woman when you were starting that real it. quick I thought you were doing like a CSI episode <laughs> in, a, in a town especially heinous crimes <laughs> is that like, how CSI starts? <laughs> that's NCIS yeah, NCIS. That, yeah that one no, that's Law and Order. Bum, 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 bum. That's, that's Law, law and Order. order. Yeah, yeah, that's Law and Order. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had no, to no. sing the theme song to think yeah. of the name of the show. But, uh, are, but no, I'm saying if there was same. a particularly heinous thing, I would still need to report on it. And and include that and say, here are the facts. Like, I, I have to separate right. myself from that and then put it on page. I wrote a, I wrote a story. Um, I, wrote two, I wrote three stories over the past week, um, Thursday and Friday's paper, that I, 
because we live in a small town that I know the people involved in that. And I had to write a a narrative. Of, a, of I, had to, I had to say this is what happened, recognizing the fact that I know these people. And I have to separate myself from that and, and super consciously recognize any bias I might put into that and then give it to someone else's eyes and say, read this and see what it says. And, and am I presenting the facts as they are happening without saying how I feel about it or how you should feel about it? And then I had to do it again the next day twice. Yep. And um, and that's that is it can be difficult. It can wrapping be well difficult. wrapping up the who gets credit for the uh, the recent city council reports. Uh, Zach Burcham says that the kerfuffle at the city council meeting was the report of the Courier Times and reported on by the Boss Hogger Liberty podcast. So it's a team effort. You both get credit. Congratulations. He said it was a result yeah. of a report in yes, the Courier Times because it was the team the, effort. The objection yes. that was there was was taken because of things that were quotes that were given to the paper. So yeah. it's a big. We all depend upon each other. the The twenty four hour news cycle of Henry County, we have to have. You know, I heard it on Boss Hogg and I read it in the Courier, and then and, and then we talk and about it. They ask him, and it feeds on the uh, it, in, on the on the, on con- the citizens of Henry citizens, County, right? Yeah. And then all I right. saw it on Henry County scanners. Yeah, there you go. So uh, speaking of citizens of Henry County, I'm going to lead us into the final thoughts portion of the about episode. Time. Lead us in prayer. <laughs> That's where I thought we were going. I'm going to Dakota. Yes, I'm going to lead us in prayer. Dear <laughs> Easter worshippers, we've gathered together. I went to a very. How do you feel? Why, why didn't you indict him? <laughs> Would you, you to, care if it was a different Coger? You have to. Uh, <laughs> you have to go to the Patreon to understand what the hell he's talking about. So my Otherwise, my final think thoughts crazy. portion of the show is a few weeks. Uh, yeah, a few weeks ago well, now. You're starting final thoughts. You're not going to go around the room and end. I with am yourself? because I want to make sure that we actually get to this part of the show. Okay, so that we can. <laughs> get this done well a trained host would just start with Cade and work his way around and then remember it <laughs> okay you want to go Cade yeah start you want me to since go since this is so, Jeremiah's so, world we yeah, just live in it welcome to the boss hogger okay. direction comes from the boss hogger I want to know <laughs> what you guys would do if you won a six, 768 million dollar Powerball we talked about this a little a, bit before the show I yep. pay a hell of a lot in taxes Wisconsin yeah. man Manuel Franco he won that and claimed it and he elected to go with the $477 million cash. Manuel, so cash Manuel out. Franco doesn't sound like a native Wisconsin name. Wow. I'm judgmental? <laughs> <laughs> there are migrant, like legal migrant yeah. workers in, in Wisconsin. He's saying not they native. Got, they got fr- uh, he probably works on a dairy there. farm. Listen, yeah. if you can't, if you can't take a joke, then. I, I'm just calling you this, out for being white. Then this white. podcast isn't for you. <laughs> Did you just call your podcast a joke? I said, if you can't take a joke, <laughs> then this podcast is a pew. Because we joke on the podcast. It might be a joke. I don't know. It's not. I, it's the, I hear it's the number one rated podcast. In we East are East Central India's favorite podcast. According and, and to, we're uh, here to push your boundaries. What, was, you what was that one guy's name? <coughs> Jerry? Gary? Something yeah. like that? Larry yeah. Gergich. Yeah. All right. So you take $400 million lump sum. What are you going to do with it? I don't. I think well, I are would, you taking the lump sum? Or are you taking the the twenty year payout? I, yeah, I don't. I don't know what. I don't know what I would do. Do you want the annuity? Honestly, I think I would take. I think I would. I don't know. I think I would take the lump sum. I'd pay off all my debt, all my family's debt. Jeremiah just nodded his head like, and he I was just, like, he was like, yeah, good choice. I'm taking five percent. I think choice, I would Katie. just live off the interest. Yeah, I'm taking lump sum. Absolutely. There's no way. You never know. I might not live for twenty years. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, would okay. you guys Hold change on. your lifestyle? Memento more. Remember death, Chris. Hold on. Hold on. So, so s- let me just quick, quick napkin math. <laughs> so we split 768 in half. Yeah. All right. So 380. Yep. Okay. So three, 380 million dollars divided by 20 years. That's not enough. But hold on, let me let me ask you this, okay? That's you could take that three hundred eighty million and put it into mutual bond, mutual stock, and that on average gets you a ten percent return. So that's thirty eight million dollars alone, and you're not even touching your principal. So then on top of that, you pass that thirty three hundred eighty million dollars down to your kids who pass it on down through. He doesn't understand. He doesn't understand inheritance tax. Mm-hmm. But well, that's when you have an estate. I, Death tax. <laughs> hold on, hold on. You have you have moved on to estates. Didn't the inheritance tax go away though? Like the one time inheritance. Tax. No, because all the all the Trumpians are fighting against it. Because like, yeah, don't tax me for dying, dude. We ain't. 
We're not. Okay. We're not. So, Guffy, Actually, you're taking the lump sum. Is there any, any major purchase you're making? Any one big any thing? Any tax except for Absolutely. I'm going to Some purchase a Jeep Wrangler. A Jeep Wrangler. Yeah, I'm going to get it jacked up, and I'm just going to be the douchiest looking guy ever. <laughs> you're going to spend 80 grand on a Jeep You don't need $380 million to look like a douche. Yes, well, I do. So, the third, <laughs> the third largest Powerball, you'd go buy a Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that's the, Kate, that's seems, the first purchase. Seems <laughs> solid. He's uh, he, th- this is the guy that thinks the apartment upstairs is way too big and elaborate. Listen, I can no live way. in a Connex. I have, and I would, I would again. <laughs> with two other. Hold guys. on. <laughs> yeah. with, with for the guy. people that yeah. are listening that might be potential voters, please clarify that <laughs> you didn't live in the Connex just because it was your choice. <laughs> No, go ahead. <laughs> Technically, it, it was my choice. He's a GI did, Joe because I did sign up for service. Okay, yeah, that's and true. then they they made me go to. But it was because you served Afghanistan in, the, in Afghanistan. Yeah, Hero. and then I shared a connex with a fellow guy. Well, a connex is a containerized housing unit. It's the a, thing it's that a, they put on it's semis. A trailer. It's a trailer on a semi that they cut a hole in for a door, and then they put bunks in there. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then I've also shared a, a room, probably. 17 by 17 ish with eight other guys. Wow. Infantry. Who? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. I can right. say that. All right. <laughs> All right. Like, okay. Final um, lump sum. Lump sum. Uh, no, I would do the, I would do the 20 year and then just throw it in there. Like just throw my stuff in there and kind of louder it out. Yeah. I'm not going to live for 20 years. And basically anybody who wins. You're not going to live to be Well, no, Guffy goes, oh, if you don't live for 20 years. Okay. So let's go off of that. I just leave it to my kids. Would you quit your have... job or keep being the editor? Um, I would have a lot more fun being the editor. <laughs> I'd probably, maybe I'd buy the newspaper. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I would definitely do a lot more with saved games. Um, like I would, all of a sudden your hobbies get to do what they want to do. Yeah, like it's getting there, Dakota. It's getting there. Fine. Uh, <laughs> we, we, Kirsten we, we Kronk go. asks if uh, Guffy's finally, finally would uh, buy his own Netflix subscription. <laughs> <laughs> no, the price went up. I would never buy my own Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's a, that's a, fiscally that's a line responsible too over here, hold on. Do your final thoughts as well. Well, I've got no, to no, answer no, mine. You haven't answered yours. No, <laughs> I know. We're. Go- I'm going to. In- <laughs> all right. Well, we'll, we'll skip over now. I am. I am also host on this podcast, yeah. Jeremiah. So I'm saying, included <laughs> in your final thoughts. Ooh. Please, Whoa. please elaborate on your final thoughts, and we will include okay. our answers uh, in our final thoughts. Um, my final thought. It has to be in the form of a question. What does my final thought have no. to be no. in the form of a question? No. Okay. Well, he said he was going to answer no. my question. Uh, no, I was answering Cades. And I got you. So. um This uh, Saturday, all day Saturday, is um, the Magic the Gathering War of the Spark pre-release at Save Games Library and Shop, 1426 Broad Street, Suite F in Newcastle. That's 15th and Broad in the Hope Initiative building. Friday night at midnight after... He broke our lamp, everybody. Uh, Friday night at midnight after Friday Night Magic, we're going to start a midnight pre-release, and then there will be a 10 a.m., a 3 p.m., and a 7 p.m. event. $25 $25 for each event or $80 to buy a spot in all four. Um, and it's the new War of the Spark. If you follow Magic the Gathering, it's insane. There's going to be 36 Planeswalkers. It's just going to be an all-out just battle for the next year. It sounds it's, like the nerdery is going to be very busy. It is, it is going to be insane, and it's going to be fantastic. And just popping in, just stop in when you guys are uh, pogoing on Saturday because you can get the uh, the murals. You can swipe the murals from in the shop. So stop in on Saturday, watch everybody being hyped up on on monsters and Mountain Dew, and the the smell of ink off of the cards. Guffy, you're gonna be there, yeah? Uh, I've got plans. No, uh, you. <laughs> I, it's not even hockey season. It's baseball. I know, but it's baseball season. I know. Okay. Are the Indians playing? They sure, are. I've already been to two games. Dude, that's awesome. I was uh, his mandate once. That's fantastic. We had a lovely so, time. Um, we still have spots uh, open, so um, give me a call. Hit me up on Facebook. Saved Games Library and Shop. Also, you should read the Courier Times. Uh, you can get an online-only subscription, or you can subscribe uh, and get the paper delivered to you uh, Tuesday through Friday and Sunday. Um, in the city, if you live outside the city and we have to mail it to you, it gets mailed Monday through Friday. Those are my right. final thoughts. Also, I would take the 20-year annuity. <laughs> Dakota. All right, uh, my final thoughts. I would take the lump sum, and what I would do with it is I would, but first of all, 
I would build a nice big barn on lot parcel number one. <laughs> <laughs> so he's already improving the property, mm-hmm. which is raising his assessment. And then, which is, uh, inc- it, which yeah. is rising, raising all boats. Henry wouldn't, County, wouldn't have to worry about it then. Henry County's getting, not giving you an abatement, you know. Maybe it would be a party barn. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, ag-, ag tourism. Wedding barn. Yeah. Wedding barn. There we go. An abatement for that. Then I would never... Then that's how the rich get richer, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh I need to pay you for a share, Dakota. Then I then I guess I would uh I would probably buy a new vehicle. Probably wouldn't be a, a Jeep, Jeep Wrangler right? though. <laughs> I would get I would keep I would keep my truck, pay it off, and then I would go buy like a Rolls Royce. Is it you gonna drive that on our county roads? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, you could actually pay to have our county <laughs> roads fixed. I could. I would probably definitely nope. <laughs> I would probably definitely look into having my like my just my road paved. You could toll and road. The, you could toll road all of Henry County. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, uh, it would be I've, like driving through Michigan City, Indiana, where the, all of a sudden the roads get really nice, and then you see a sign that says you are now driving on public property or private property. That would that would be ha- what uh, County Road. Uh, isn't that never what mind? Li- not gonna, that not what gonna the, get my address out. What the libertarian like Somalia philosophy is is Somalia that we just philosophy. own all the main all the roads are privately owned. Well, I think that's more ANCAP philosophy. Okay. It's not my personal philosophy. I'm a pragmatist. Anyhow. He's a big government libertarian. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So big L. then my other final thoughts are a few <laughs> weeks ago we started the East Central Indiana News Facebook group, which was previously known as the Boss Hog of Liberty Inner Circle. However, we want the East Central Indiana News to be a place where all of the listeners of this podcast and anybody else that is from East Central Indiana goes and puts news from their own area into that group so that we can collect stories, we can collect information about what is going on in the other parts of our area, and try to relate that and the stories that happen here to what's going on in your neck of the woods. <laughs> uh, that's it from Good Morning America. Anyway, uh, but yeah, some uh, some more participation in that group would be great. I know we haven't advertised it at all. We just kind of renamed it, and I created a, a cover photo for that group and then kind of left it there. But um, it will develop its own culture and take. Yeah, I want to think of it as like a. I I was gonna say like a a citizens of Henry County for all of East Central Indiana, but maybe not like that. A regional discussion board. Yeah, without without the a forum. There we go. I can't wait till you have a a fourteen rule long list of things you Mm -hmm. can and can't do. No memes and no gifts, please. (laughs) (laughs) It slows down. Just kidding. All right. Final thoughts from me. (laughs) Answering Cade's question. Uh, I am also going to take the lump sum, and uh, Zach Bircham and I are going to start an IndyCar team. I think uh, we'll we're burn through a few million like that. We're going to be businessmen and have uh, have the th- have a sweet IndyCar team based right here in the East Central Indiana. Uh, but uh, podcast will continue. We're just going to have a whole lot better uh, equipment. Oh yeah, and I would I would quit my job camera. and do this full time. Yeah, we would yeah. we would, be, would be a be daily a, show. There would be a staff. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> it would be uh, it would be life changing for a number of people in the room. Not Travis. He would still work at the old school, old paper. But the rest of the crew would have uh, <laughs> have a very good future. Yeah, that's would true. I, would I have the upgraded Netflix account, Jeremiah? Yeah, we would definitely have the full streaming, the highest, the highest level. Is yes. that part of so? Among so your best. your employee package doesn't include health insurance or dental, but you get like the HD Netflix. That's true. I got he has a key to the building with uh, gigabit internet speed. Okay? That's true. And we bought him a laptop. He does. Hold okay. on, we. All three of us. You keep saying there was a it was a mutual chip in deal. Um, uh, final thought for me. Also, I'm giving a shout out to Rex Bell, my buddy. He is uh, November 2016. He was laying in a hospital bed after a stroke. Uh, he's doing the mini marathon. He did 13.1 miles the other day in his in practice. He did a 13. He did, he's already he did done a, a 13 one. Yeah. So he's already up to the mini distance. He's uh, he's going to do it in the, in the mini. So very excited for that. Absolutely, uh, big deal. Yeah, uh, you know <laughs> he's come a long way, and I'm very proud of him. So yeah, Rex. I'm, and, yeah, I'm, I told you. it's phenomenal. At uh, <clears throat> at Rex's advanced age, it's pretty darn impressive is, to do uh, it at all. Is Stinky uh, like 
cheering him on? Well, uh, listen, I heard that there was a stinky Wilmot Memorial pothole, so I, I'm a little worried now. Some people were wondering, did something tragic happen to Stinky? And I think people just want, I think Stinky just wants to, I think Stinky just wants people to talk about him, so now he's, he, there's a memorial pothole. I'm not sure. Well, Stinky's I haven't really seen trouble. Stinky Wilmot's uh, obituary at the Courier Times. I don't know if Stinky would pay the extra. They probably wouldn't pay. <laughs> you, I don't we know. We have a free option. I printed those. 100 words or less, it's free. I, I, I'll tell you what, I don't remember the turkey having to pay for its obituary last year. That's true. I just hear crickets. <laughs> no, 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 that's true. I don't want to bring it up because some people got really <laughs> upset. <laughs> really upset. <laughs> Except, did you see, and I shared this, on Easter, somebody ran a newspaper head run, Jesus's obituary. Jesus's, Jesus's, Jesus's. Jesus. 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 Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Uh, the, yeah, they ran Jesus's obit, and it was really cool. I liked the way they did it, and, and it was Did they actually, have a retraction three days later? <laughs> nice. No, it was actually like, yeah, he's, he's, he's raised. Um, but it was... And I was like, would people get mad at us if we ran something like this? And it was, a, it, at the end, it was an announcement, you know, for a, a church. But it was ran on their obituary page. And I'm like, would people throw a fit if I ran, if I made the decision as the editor of the newspaper to put Jesus's obit and then, oh, yeah, he, hey, he raised from the dead in the Sunday Easter section? Would they go, well, you can't do that because I've got actual obits in here. Well, you know, the turkey made national news. <laughs> And I interviewed said turkey and had an exchange, and I think people cared when it... Uh, it was a tragedy. The entire community on. still mourns. And we, this week was the one-week anniversary of the death of the turkey, and we are all still very upset. Sometimes our friend Eric does, does find a way to tweet from beyond the grave, and uh, we're all thankful for it. That's enough of this. Uh, no show this Thursday. We are, uh, we'll be back uh, to Thursday of next week. Thursday of next week. Patreon members. Patreon members only. Jump in. Join now. You get to, you get to come to that show and it's a book signing with Eric Schonsberg. That's correct. We'll see you all then.